Hi! And before we begin hunting Error Killer, I would like to let you know that this video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer. Hunt a Killer is a subscription service based on a fictional crime. Every month they send you a box of evidence, with the goal being to eliminate suspects, establish a timeline, learn the motive, and find the real killer. We talk a lot about true crime on this channel, obviously. And this game puts you in the detective's seat, leading the investigation. They sent me a season and honestly it is so much fun staying inside playing for hours and hours at a time. In the monthly boxes you get evidence, pictures, reports, videos, audio recordings, I can't believe it. He's dead. Please and then you put all these pieces together, solve codes and think outside the box using real world knowledge. If you'd be interested please check out huntakiller.com slash that chapter and you can get 20% off your first box by using code chapter. Also, part of the proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation that works to bring justice, support, and hope to families affected by violent crime. Which I think, talking about the cases we do here, I think we can all get on board on. Once again, that's huntakiller.com slash that chapter and use code chapter at checkout for 20% off your first box. Thanks to Huntakiller for making an awesome, really, really fun product and for helping support that chapter. Alrighty then, let's get into it. you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video we're gonna be looking at a uh, love triangle gone wrong. As uh, you know if I'm covering this love triangle it probably did go wrong. This is that chapter. This is the case of Sabrina Limone, her husband Robert, and a guy named Jonathan Hearn. As soon as I mention a woman and her husband probably know where this is going. No spoilers, I don't want to spoil the video in the introduction. So what do you say we get into the whole shebang? Let's go! Sabrina Sandmillan was born in 1979 and met her future husband Robert, who was three years older than her when they were both teenagers in good old Arizona. Why is everything old? They were, by all accounts, a lovely outgoing couple, devout Christians, that would eventually get married, have two kids, and up sticks to Hellendale, California, where Robert got a job working the railroads. Sabrina stayed at home with the kids. Alright, so I, you know, we're just starting this video off, telling the story of what happened, but so far so good, am I right? It won't stay that way for long, so don't worry. See, at one point in 2008, the Lamones, Sabrina and Robert, they decided to become swingers. So that happened. Opening the old marriage, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, as I said, if I'm talking about it, you probably know it was a bad idea. See, Sabrina didn't really want to, but Robert sure did. In their swinging circle were best friends Jason and Kelly Bernatine, and Robert, he sure liked Kelly, happily telling his wife Sabrina about all the awesome sex they were having. Oh yeah! I'm sure she was delighted to hear that because as I said, Sabrina wasn't too into the swinging. Hey Robert, thanks for telling me. I'd love to hear more about how you're reaming my best friend. Tell me more. Love it. Sabrina would get a job at Costco, presumably to get away from the moaning. And one day in 2012, when she was handing out samples, who should walk in but the future love of her life? Jonathan Hearn, a firefighter. He was in Costco getting supplies. He asked for her number. She gave it to him and a whole lot more. He was 10 years younger than Sabrina. He was 22. But they clicked right off the bed. Fast. She would show him the wily ways. See, Jonathan, he grew up quite sheltered, homeschooled, very religious. So as Sabrina, she wasn't getting as much attention from her husband Robert as she would like. He was, he was a really nice guy, but you know, party, party dude, he was a party dude. So Sabrina and Jonathan soon fell deeply in love. But they had to keep this affair a secret because even though, you know, they had an open marriage, but this was an affair because Robert didn't know about it. Although actually, no, Robert did find out about it one time and he confronted Jonathan, but you know, this thing between Sabrina and Jonathan was kind of on again, off again, but they were always keeping it a secret. That is until 2014 when Robert Lamone was shot dead. Yeah, real whodunit. 
On August 17, 2014, Robert was shot twice while at work at the railroad facility in Tehachapi, no doubt I butchered that, California, shot in the face and in the chest. S Sabrina? She was heartbroken over Robert's death. Wink, wink. And from the start, you know, when the police started uh, investigating, because I guess you should if somebody's been murdered, they were scratching their heads. What happened? I don't know. They found jack shit at the crime scene, but what they did have was this mysterious footage. A figure was snooping around up to no good, no doubt, though it was impossible to tell who this was. A $100,000 reward was offered to generate leads, but didn't. So, unsolved murder, right? Wrong. Dedra. Ah, maybe just wrong. See, a few weeks after uh, Robert's murder, the detective investigating got a ring ring from Jason Bernatine. Remember, who was one of the swingers the lemons would swing with. And Jason told the detective he'd gotten a number of texts from Jonathan, which is weird. Texts that were basically apologizing for having an affair with Sabrina. Not that he would need to apologize to Jason anyway. He was basically asking for forgiveness. Weird, right? Why would he do that? Why would he even draw attention on himself? Remember, Sabrina and Jonathan were keeping this affair hush-hush. Nobody knew about it. Nobody alive, anyway. I mean, Robert, he had confronted when he found out, but he thought it was over. It wasn't. So nobody knew really anything about Jonathan. The detectives certainly didn't, but they did now. So the police went to speak to Sabrina. Hey. Heard you're having an affair. You and Robert had an open marriage, but was there someone he didn't know about? Hmm? No, we had a great marriage. I just miss him so- So she denied anything about having, you know, a relationship with Jonathan. Which was weird, because she kind of cut Robert's family out of her children's lives. And seemed to kind of be, uh, you know, moving on towards something else. And of course, there was also Robert Lemon's life insurance payout of $300 thousand dollars because of course there was and so the investigators sniffing about smelled bullshit and started investigating Sabrina and this Jonathan guy they found out she had a secret phone that she used to communicate with Jonathan Hearn and they wiretapped in listening to what they were up to <laughs> Things were beginning to look a lot clearer to the police now, but they didn't really get anything out of the wiretaps. No admissions of guilt or anything like that. It was just kind of weird conversations. There's a purpose for all the things you've got. There is. There sure is. There is a But they did get enough to get a warrant to search Jonathan's house. What did they find there, I wonder? Well, what they found was, and I know you're going to be shocked by this, the clothes the person in that mysterious footage was wearing. They also learned Jonathan owned two guns, just like the one that was used to gun down Robert. So, three months after Robert's murder, Jonathan was arrested at his firehouse. Sabrina was also arrested on her way into her children's school for a PTA meeting. Now, Sabrina was soon released. They had jack shit on her, I guess. But they had enough to keep Jonathan. And they kept him for months. So, the police were pretty positive that Jonathan was the one who murdered Robert. But... Did he come up with it by himself? Did he? Really, though? Putting pressure on Jonathan. You're going away for life unless you come clean and squeeze the limon. He talked. He turned in Sabrina, told them everything about the affair, their diabolical schemes, and what they had done. And Sabrina was brought back in. So we've had multiple conversations up to this day, and today is the 19th of November. It's about 4, 45. Okay, so we know, I know that uh, through this investigation, there's been several times that we have been on It's okay, I understand you were probably upset and scared and you didn't know what to say. I know a lot of information. 
I can't give this information out, obviously for the investigation, because I would not want that to be revealed. So I know tons of stuff about all of this that's gone on. And I want you to tell me the truth. Okay. I need the truth. Okay. Just let you know that you have to be told else. This is so freaking serious. I can't tell you how serious this is. You're lying to me. It's going to be very difficult for you. You can see the way this looks really bad because you have an affair. You have a motivator for money. It's hard for me to imagine that, honestly, that you didn't know this was going on. Everything that has been said has been evidence that it's clear. It's my fault for telling Jonathan where Robert was that day. It most, it most certainly is. It is it is your fault. But, I mean, for the last four hours, um, Detective Myers told you that you're holding on to something. There's something that you know that you're not telling us. It, it, it's, it's time to, uh, it's time to share you off the plot. I have to apologize for not being honest with them. Telling them about our relationship before. That's that's the only thing that, that you want to apologize for is for not telling us about the affair. That's my fault. We established that. I'm not I'm not here to I'm not here to kick in the teeth. Robert is dead because of you. Make no mistakes about that. That is something that you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. That is something that your children are going to have to live with for the rest of their lives. I care less about you. I care about your kids. They didn't ask for this. You're a grown woman. Make decisions. And why you would tell a man, I think he's, not a, he's not a man, he's a coward. He, he's, he's a scumbag. Um, why you would tell the guy that you're you're sharing a bed with where your husband works beyond me. What I need you to do is I need you to stand up and turn around. And handcuffs on. Time. Months after a railroad employee was gunned down at the rail yard in Tehachapi, two people are behind bars, one of them his own wife. Robert Limon was returning from a day of work in the field when he was shot and killed. It happened back in August at the rail shop on Goodrick Drive in Tehachapi. About an hour and a half south of Tehachapi is where Limon had a home in the Silver Lakes area, and just 30 minutes further south is where her, his uh, wife's alleged lover lived in Hesperia. Pictures from Sabrina Limon's Facebook page show a softer side of her marriage to husband Robert. Every time... Uh... Like I say, seeing them both together, they were just hugging kisses and, and uh, just happy. The couple who had two children together and are remembered to friends as happy and a family who loved to travel. When they had uh, either going to Pismo Beach and coming back, you know, he had swing by and, and um, that's what I hear is a, a really surprise because they seem like they're just a loving family. But today, family and friends were left in shock after deputies arrested wife Sabrina Lamone from Silver Lake and Jonathan Hearn from Hesperia in connection with a 38-year-old father's death. I just shook my head and I really couldn't believe that Sabrina... Around 5 p.m. on August 17th, Robert Lamone, an emergency responder at BNSF Railway, was coming back to this shop in Tehachapi when he was shot and killed. Basically, we we're still all in shock. Detectives were led to 35-year-old Lamone and 24-year-old Hearn, who they say had developed a romantic relationship. Uh, they learned that Jonathan Hearn had developed a relationship with Sabrina Lamone 
prior to Robert Lamone's murder. Both Hearn and Lamone now face charges of first degree murder and conspiring to commit a crime, with Lamone facing an extra charge of an accessory to murder. Alrighty, three years later, the trial would begin. So, as I said, Jonathan, he struck a plea deal and spilled the beans on the entire yoke. He told the jury about they had planned to kill Robert in myriad ways, from fires, which is kind of ironic if he had done that and Jonathan had saved him as a firefighter. They had also planned to kill him by staging a car accident and by poisoning him. Jonathan had actually tested out the poison, arsenic, on a neighborhood dog which didn't end well for the dog. That's shitty, I think you'll agree. Sabrina had actually put the poison in a pudding in Robert's packed lunch, but chickened out. When Robert left for work that day, Sabrina called him, told him not to eat it. This eventually led to Jonathan suiting up and shooting Robert. Jonathan said he wore a Halloween mask as he entered the facility, spoke briefly to Robert, who offered him a drink, and then shot him with a 45 caliber Glock he equipped with a silencer made from a flashlight. Now, was a decision made um, to kill Robert Lamont in that time frame you've talked about? Yes, sir. Okay. Was there also a plan in place what to do once he was gone? There was. We discussed. Uh, crime concealment as far as not getting detected in the first place, but then we also did discuss uh, a future together um, ar around that time, discussing more seriously uh, a marriage in the future. Uh, she expressed a number of reasons why divorce was not a very appealing option for her, and that was part of what solidified some of our conversations about uh, his actual eventual demise. So. Did you settle on a method to kill Robert initially? Yes, I did. What was the initial method that you decided upon? Uh, poisoning. Okay. Did you have any other methods in mind? Briefly considered some others, yes, but uh, she asked me how, how I thought would be best, and we discussed uh, I believe car accident and fire and quickly uh, skipped over those and arrived at poisoning and then uh, did a significant amount of discussion and planning. So why didn't Sabrina and Robert just get a divorce? You may be asking. Well, the guy in the sky, they didn't think he would be a fan of that. Plus they were very uh, image conscious, so they were like, divorce, ooh, that's a no-no. You said that you discussed uh, divorce with Sabrina? I did. Okay, what was her response to those discussions? Uh, that divorce was not something very appealing to her as an option for uh, the foundation of our, of our relationship together. Um, she gave me a, a number of reasons for a variety of different reasons, um, and, and these were things we, we uh, discussed over numerous conversations, but to um, summarize, um, for her own sake, first of all, uh, she expressed that the loyalty of her family and friends would most likely be with Rob, so if she was to uh, initiate a divorce, most of her friends and family would side with Rob and she would be seen as uh, the bad guy, so to speak. So. Um, it, that was that was one of the main reoccurring reasons, uh, but other reasons just included, I think, the lifestyle of uh, sort of autonomy that she wouldn't really have to address ongoing issues with Rob. Um, also, she expressed issues with uh, that it would be in the the children's best interest as far as um, if. As far as the complications that arise out of having children raised in two different households with dual custody and all of those issues, uh, that divorce wasn't so much a, a pleasing option, um, even for as ironic and sad as this sounds, uh, for Rob's sake, um, she expressed that he would honestly rather be dead than divorced. and. Um, that uh, 
losing her would essentially kill him, which was something she didn't want to cause as far as the emotional expression, kill him. Um, so uh, it, those were, like I said, a summary of some of the things she expressed. Uh, I had a frank disgust for him that was developing and contributing to me being very dismissive of his life, ultimately. Jonathan said the couple had plans to marry so he could become the stepfather of Sabrina's kids. They wanted the children to be raised by, quote, godly parents. Whatever that means. I mean, I know what it means, but you know what I mean. How did this opening up your marriage, entering into an open marriage, affect your relationship? I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, it just, like I said, our sacred, our sacred bond that we had was broken as soon as we made that choice together. And was there kind of a unwritten rule that you weren't supposed to talk about opening up your marriage with anyone else between you and Rob? Would, um, say that again, please. Sure. Was there some sort of unwritten rule or was there an agreement between you and Rob not to ever discuss that you'd open up your marriage. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Miss Lamone, after your husband died, you did not want to tell law enforcement about Jonathan, correct? Correct. Okay. The killer of your husband did not want you to tell law enforcement about him, correct? Correct. Okay. So you and the killer of your husband had the exact same desire in respect to law enforcement, correct? I did not know that Jonathan Hearn was the killer. Okay. Did you have the exact same desire in respect to law enforcement as Jonathan Hearn did? No. You did not want law enforcement to find out about Jonathan Hearn. At that time, no, I did not. Starts out on top. Unbelievable how you make me feel. Did you give this card to Jonathan? Yes. Unforgettable. Every moment with you. That's what the card reads. Okay. Well, you picked this out for Jonathan, didn't you? Yes. Okay. Unlimited, the possibilities for our life together. That's what it says. And you sent this card to the man who killed your husband, did you not? I gave it to him at, before losing Robert, yes. Nothing further, Your Honor. Sabrina denied everything, of course she did. Well, she admitted to the affair, but Moida, oh, oh no sorry, Bob. In fact, the defense argued that Jonathan was controlling and manipulative, and that Sabrina had no idea of his intention to kill prior to killing, which seems surprising. On October 5th, 2017, after a trial lasting three weeks, Sabrina would eventually be found guilty of first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation of murder, and accessory to murder, and get 25 years to life in prison. So there. Jonathan, as part of the deal he struck, he was charged with voluntary manslaughter, got 25 years and four months in prison in exchange for that testimony against Sabrina. I am guilty of choices that have torn awful wounds in many hearts, rippling destructively through so many precious lives. I have fallen terribly short of the standards of Jesus who commands to serve each other, to be humble and to love one another. I have evoked God's name and yet behaved exactly opposite of his dictates. 
I have sinned. I am aware that for my crimes, anything short of death is really merciful. <sighs> Yet for my sin, I truly do deserve much worse. After the trial, Sabrina hired a new attorney, basically saying she wasn't given a fair trial and that her previous attorney had failed to prepare her for taking the stand. Yeah, yes. The new attorney said that she deserves a new trial due to that, arguing that, well, you know, uh, she went to prison because her previous attorney was shit. And they also argued against the overly aggressive interrogation by the police. It, it, it's, it's time to, uh, it's time to shit or get off the plot. That request for a new trial for Sabrina got poo-pooed. And that's the story of Sabrina, Robert, and Jonathan. When life gives you limones, make murder. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.